I'm Lawrence Yang. Um, one of my identities is as a family doctor. I'm full name is Remnik Dosange. I am a family physician and I also work as a hospitalist, but I'm a mother, a daughter, a sister, an advocate, and above all, a human, a spirit, having an experience. I was sharing my story of how I got into trouble prescribing, prescribing opioids, right? Absolutely. Yeah. That prescribing opioids is such a tricky thing because as family doctors, we all really want to help people, but it's so easy to go too far and to over help or to over prescribe and then get people kind of stuck. Some early career physicians are struggling with that exact same thing. And because I would put myself out there with going through those struggles and then learning through what the College of Physicians made me do, um, some of the practice support program people put me in touch with some of the, the new early career physicians who are struggling with the same thing. And it feels amazing to be able to share some of those learnings that I learned with them. And I think there's something to be said about that because I think people, at least the public and our patients, there's a persona. There is a stoicism about medicine, and for us, we're all very high achieving, usually type A, overly competitive individuals that have this expectation, whether it's a self-inflicted expectation or an external world you know, association. I feel that when you're able to leverage your vulnerability with others, it makes them feel so much less the weight of the responsibility lessens and the burden is shared did you experience that kind of culture of perfectionism when you went through medical education i did i think i more than the medical education i think i grew up with it i think it was uh you know always being the straight a rule following by the book first daughter in my family i felt a lot of expectations you know always being cognizant of shine but shine quietly do what you're told don't make noise you get wrapped into this perfectionism and it follows you whether it's through you know body image with friends or people around you as you're growing up there's always a little bit of sadness there for me because keeping up with everybody at that pace is not human you know at the same time we program ourselves to thinking that we have to be these perfect beings all the time. My moment came with my own vulnerability in 2011. I had a katakwina, a true katakwina syndrome, and I don't know if people know that that are watching, but that's when your spinal cord, you lose, I lost complete bowel bladder function of my lower limbs, and wow. I had to come undone. A lot yeah. of who I was, was associated with my physicality, with my performance. I was an athlete growing up and I was an avid runner. I, stress release for me was exercise. I've always believed in health and wellness and I always felt that as a doc, you needed to walk the walk, be healthy and fit. And then it was taken away from me in an instant. And those arduous months of recovery and depending on the outside world and your internal dialogue, those were probably some of the hardest months of my life. And that moment for me to say to my patients, I can't return to my practice to take care of you because I need to take care of myself first it was a really hard moment. I, I think there are so many of our colleagues who feel are probably in burnout and they feel like no one hears or sees or knows that they're there. If we create a circle of trust, a network, may it be amongst ourselves and grow ourselves and say, hey, I'm here to help. I think COVID and this pandemic, the economic instability, the repercussions, societal, impact a lot of people have been operating in fight or flight mode which quite often we do anyways we've got the highest burnout that we've seen nationally in a long time and i think putting a global pandemic on top of it has been sequelae that we haven't prepared for is what makes me a little nervous 
I just think, imagine if we can get all of our colleagues that are either struggling with burnout or disengaged because, or feeling disenfranchised because they don't have a sense of belonging and connection, I think it's time to restore that. If you enjoyed that trailer, don't forget to click the thumbs up and subscribe. You can find the link to the full-length episode in the description below.